Welcome survivors to Mikey's Gaming Oasis. Today we are going over another mod review. This one is a little bit different. We are doing a mod review for Aaron Longstaff's Steampunk Decor mod. Now currently this mod is not available on official at the time of this recording. He has stated that he will be making this into a skin that he will, he will hopefully have available unofficial soon a little special guest in this one as well as aaron longstaff has graciously agreed to do an interview and walk through with me as we do this review and give us some insight and in, into the modding process so that we as his consumers can understand the effort and time that these modders take to make these mods that allow us to have a better experience in the game we love. So without further ado, let's get into this. In this mod, you will see, we have to go into our crafting to get to it. It's Steampunk Decor, and all of them have the little AL sign next to it. He does this on all of his mods, to make it easier for you to find them when you're using. So as you can see, it has 19 different uh, icons or engrams, but within each one of them, there are multiple items within almost every one of these engrams. So Aaron, uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, how long did it take you to actually make this mod? Thanks for having us, uh, Mikey, as always, buddy. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, in all, in all, in total, probably around about two and a half weeks, uh, and that was working pretty much, I don't know, nine, ten o'clock in the morning till about sometimes two or three o'clock on a night time. Uh, reason it took um, so long is I just, I wanted to get out um, before Steampunk uh, came out with the Bob's Tall Tales, but I, I missed <laughs> I missed the boat with that one, so we had to really rush to kind of get this one out. So yeah, two two and a half weeks, but ultimately um, I would say in hours to hours total probably about eighty hours, like real real life hours. It took eighty hours. Wow! And how long do you think it'll take you to make it into a skin? So every mod we do, we are trying to create a skin version of it as well, so that it can be worked on official. Um, the problem is uh, trying to get the actual mod under 500 megabytes uh, for the dynamic download. So we are trying to work with that one to try and bring it as, as low as we can in terms of the size of the, the mod. Uh, but obviously, yeah, the, the plan is hopefully to get that out in, in the next few weeks. As close to the original release as we can. So we're going to start. As you see, I have them all laid out. We're going to start all the way over here. All of these engrams right here, all of these icons right here, right in front of us, are from one of the skins. Everything you see here is from this icon, is from this engram right here. It is the steampunk wall decor. Okay, this particular engram once you unlock it, gives you 16 different variations. And all 16 of them are right in front of us from the two photos, the three wall lights here that do click into it, which do uh, snap onto each other and give off a light glow. Let me enable snapping. They do snap onto each other for better alignment. And one of the things that I find extremely interesting about this particular one is if we go over here to where we're, we go free on it, it'll actually fit almost perfectly on this, on the wall skin, on that vertical beam that they have on the wall skin for steampunk. And let me set, change the time of day here and you will see what I mean by it giving a slight glow at night, which is amazing, makes it a lot easier. And no, with these particular lights, you do not need to have power. They're not actual lights. They're just giving off that glow. You have two mirrors and you have one, nine different cogs that you can set up in any arrangement you want. I just set these up this way to give us that look. You have 
four different size curtains. And matter of fact, I have the curtains set up, three of them set up on doorways over here. And I'm gonna land here, we're gonna walk through them. So Aaron, this is the first mod that I've seen where you could actually walk through your decor. Uh, most of the time there's clipping issues and it kind of messes and gets a little janky with that. How were you able to get that to work to where your curtains can sit over your doorways and you can walk through them as a separation between areas? I'm glad you picked up on that one because obviously that took a bit of time to do in all fairness because one of the issues with a lot of um, mods, especially if they're going over like windows and doors, is that you've got to have collision on it to be able to pick them up. So if you just disable the collision... You can place it, but you couldn't pick the structure back up. So um, there's a bit of code in the background, a bit of a modest secret. Um, but yeah, and it's not the first time I've actually did that. I don't know if you've if you noticed, but I also added that to the uh, Western Deco mod as well. Um, so it's something I'm going to try and do with all the kind of curtain structures uh, is to make them so you can place them. They are decorative, but again, you can use them for the things like, you know, doorway covers, that type of thing as well. So yeah, uh, it took a while to figure it out, but uh, yeah, it's, it's to do with the collision uh, and adding lots of boxes that are invisible that you can't see and uh, only allowing it to interact with the world and not the player. Well, yeah, I didn't catch that in the uh, uh, Western mod. I guess I missed a trick on that one. <laughs> You slipped one past me. I, I pride myself on the work I do yep. on these reviews, darn you. <laughs> <laughs> then you have the desks. The desks, you are, I find, very interesting. This one has seven different, var uh, five different variations. One, two, three, four, five. All five of them are right there. They do snap onto each other uh, in different locations. Then you have the chairs. The chairs, I think he outdid himself on the chairs uh, with the fact that they are all, here we go, there's 11 different chairs and they all snap to each other. They can snap front, back, side to side, all that good stuff, which is amazing. Then you have this desk here, a standalone. This only has one icon to it, but it's a storage desk that holds 75 items. It's... Uh, and works as your crafting station, sorry. And it shows a bunch of the other items that we're going to go through in this decor. If we take a look at it, it's quite nice. Okay. Then we have the chairs. And the cool thing about the chairs, is about the couches, is watch this. With regards to the clipping uh, and the snapping with the furniture, I've seen a lot of the other skins and mods when we do these when you try to snap the couches together they kind of overlap and they get a little uh clippy i guess would be the best way to put it how hard was it to yep. get them to actually clip on those edges to where it looks like it's a natural set like for instance the bench that you did where it's sitting on the on the corners instead of clipping into each other and going with the backrest of the of the bench how hard is that to actually do well i think i think snap points anyone who mods themselves will, will probably agree with the snap points are an absolute pain in the butt and they don't really make much sense in in terms of what each snap point does in the the dev kit itself so that's why probably a lot of people just kind of leave it um and i'll be honest with you that's something i would probably <laughs> probably like to do if i could just leave them but obviously i've got testers you're one of them and uh, a lot of uh, feedback is always we'd like to be able to you know make you know snap things together and, and make bigger benches um so it all depends on the actual item itself and the material it's being used whether you get like kind of fighting with like the wire x axis so you've probably seen mods before where you place two structures and you see that thing glitching so it looks like that it's basically the material fighting with each other um so again depends on what it is um squares and oblongs are much easier um but yeah it's it's predominantly from feedback and also again suggestions from other people that you know you can make other items from clipping these together but yeah seriously snap points pain in the butt in all fairness um but i think it does make a mod um a lot better if you can you know as an example snap two rugs together where they're not overlapping each other and you can make a bigger rug um that, that type of thing you know absolutely uh, it adds a great detail to the mod itself and it lends to the time and the effort that's being put into it as well. Uh, and with you 
as a fan of yours and watching you for years, I know your OCD kind of takes <laughs> takes hold just a little bit there. That's it. That's that's the answer for everything I do in the most. To be fair, to be honest with you, anything that works or doesn't work is because of my OCD. <laughs> <laughs> Then you have the end tables. With the end tables, you have uh, six different variations of end tables. They all snap together. So, for example, this one right here, we're going to find this one, which is, I just passed it. It'll snap together and even on top of each other. So, if you want to snap one on top, like so, you can. One other thing he's done is, if you notice, when I destroy these, they don't go into that big blob that you usually get with stuff like this. It turns into those actual pieces for the item that is being broken. With that, being able to break the pieces that way, how long did it take you to be able to get the system to recognize just those individual parts and what materials it's being made out of so, and other mods that I reviewed and other mods I've used, when I break a modded piece, it's always that loud. It's either the greenhouse break or the metal break, and then there's this yep. massive blob of stuff that, that you literally have to wait until it goes away to be able to really do anything. How long did it take you to do that, and why did you want to do that? Yeah, so, so yeah, it, it takes a lot longer than it would do if you just used whatever what I have used in the past, what everyone else uses. I, basically, you've got to create a destructible mesh. So you've basically got to recreate each item in the mod twice. So you've got the normal mesh that you're building it from, and then you've got the destructible mesh, which you're demolishing it to. And then you've got to decide how many pieces you want it to break into, you know, that type of thing. But um, ultimately, the way the mod works is, and, you know, anyone who mods will, 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 will appreciate this, you basically choose a base blueprint. So as an example, if you are putting something like a chair down, you'd use the blueprint of the, the arc chair that's in there. So ultimately, when you destroy that chair that you've made, it basically breaks into the mesh that they created originally, or the blueprint they created. So all you've got to do, uh, it does take a long time, you've got to recreate uh, a destructible mesh on the item you've, you've, you've got in there. It does obviously add to the size of the mod as well, not massively, not significantly. That's probably why a lot of people don't do it, because ultimately you're, you're basically you're, you're duplicating items. So if you've got 100 items in the in the mod, you have to, you have 200 in, in theory um but yeah it's um takes ages i'm not gonna lie and uh, these are the kind of things that normally don't make it into a mod because of because of time um but yeah I, I, again just kind of back to what i was saying earlier i want to try and make all my mods even if they are free as premium as possible i think it just gives it a much better kind of feel and look as opposed to demolishing a chair and it smashing into i don't know a metal tank <laughs> what a tank you know <laughs> absolutely and it, it, it... And in my opinion, it gives a better experience for the user, end user as well. Right, and, exactly. I mean, I'll be honest, you know I'm a builder and I, I'm getting into using mods in my builds and it's nothing more frustrating than having putting something down, realizing, oh, I don't like it there. You go to demolish it just for the ease of use and quickness and you have to wait for it's the size of a behemoth gate and it's just yeah. a tiny little pedestal you put down <laughs> and it's taking forever to just dissolve so you can yep. fix what you did and move on yeah completely get it yeah i get it i get it on the on all the tables that we have here all the different tables here's the six different tables on on the tables, I have his. I have set up his decorative items that can go on the table on the floor. Uh, he has two different icons for that. So you have the this icon here, or engram here, and this engram here for that. You also have a third one. We'll go over in just a second. So this one is has twelve different items. And we'll start over here with that. We have a cash register that has functioning sound. You have a, uh, a camera. You have a Krona Bellator. I have no idea what that is, but it looks cool. You have a working lamp. 
if you have power running to it, it is a working lamp. And with this lamp, what I find interesting about it is, let me set the time of day to get it tonight. Is the cone that it gives you for light. Now, if I turn it off, as you see, it, the filaments kind of glow still a little bit. Uh, the detail he has taken in this mod is absolutely amazing. And uh, I can't wait to add it to use it on some of my build videos. Uh, then you have another lamp here that is a functioning lamp that has a cone on it as well as a functioning fan with sound. Well, let me be quiet here for just a second so you can hear it. Aaron, um, I know we've gone over the detail you take in these mods several times so far. But in this set of engrams, you've kind of gone to another level. Uh, the lights give different cones based on what's around them. You, when you turn them off, the filaments still glow. And then you have a fan that not only gives you the sound of a fan, but it's also moving. What I, I appreciate it. I appreciate the detail. But what possessed you to go into that much detail for <laughs> such small decor items? <laughs> you know, it's just part of what I said before. I, I, I try to make the mods just like how I would want to use a mod. So I try to get as much pre, you know premium quality in there as I could. So, you know, if there's a fan, it's great for deco, but it would be good if it moved, especially for videos. Because a lot of videos you see, certainly before and after, and I am being quite selfish as well, because if I do a build and I want to decorate it and I'm doing a video myself, It'd be great to see things move and lights look nice and not blow out the whole room because it's too bright. So yeah, it's 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 predominantly how I would like to see a mod. I try and do that myself, and I just think if you give it premium quality, people will come back for more. Uh, and I want to what I what I really wanted to do was put a lot of items in there with like little kind of Easter eggs and just not tell people that it worked and just get people to find out themselves. I might do that for the next mod to be honest with you. Yeah, it's just predominantly if it looks like it should work and it looks like it should move and it looked like it should make a sound, that's kind of, you know, what I'm aiming for. Not everything makes the cut though, because some things are a lot harder than others. Making things spin, easy enough. <laughs> Making things like going in a different angles and stuff, a bit more difficult. That's understandable. Absolutely understandable. Then if we come back over here, oh, you have a you have a radio, you have the globe, the telephone, the chessboard that's set up, but no one's played it. You have the chessboard that looks like it's in the middle of a game, and you have this lovely Pegasus statue. Now, the next grouping here, these right here are his knickknacks that can be placed on the floor on counters wherever you want them to be placed there is 11 of them you have books this is book number four you have the stack of books you have a magnifying glass a couple of other individual books that he has out a zeppelin a case a steampunk box that right now is not a storage container uh you have a a uh, two, two different types of bags. You have a bag here and a bag here. Then you have uh, a, a barometer. Now, he has your bookshelves here. There's two different types. You have one with a chair and one without a chair. Now, the one with the chair, the chair is not functional. Okay, I say again, the chair is not functional. But it does work as your bookshelf. Then over here, you have the other skin I was telling you about. The other, sorry, the other, the floor decor items. You have a telescope, two telescopes. You have a trash bin, an, uh, a coal bucket for your, for your fireplace. You have a functional lamp. You have a grandfather clock. Currently does not link to the world clock, but it does function as a light. You have a larger globe. To go with it now as you see we have other stuff on the wall here but before we get to that we're going to get to this uh chandelier that he has the chandelier is absolutely beautiful this is one of the 
this mod is one of the first that I've seen that hasn't, when you have extra lighting going on in it, hasn't caused a lot of lag uh, on the server, which is amazing. But I'm going to set this back. I'm going to go to another uh, set time of day here to reduce, to give us a, a nighttime effect so we can see what this s chandelier can provide to us in lighting. As you can see, it's quite bright and very beautiful. Okay, I'm going to leave the lights off. I'm going to leave it at this time of day, and I'll show you why in just a moment. This right here is his industrial cooker. If you go in here, it looks just like it. It runs off of power just like the regular one. Then you have your boilers here. We go into them. Consumables. That looks... That is your grills. They run off of wood. So let me spawn in some wood here. Okay, and I will put a little bit of wood into each of these variations on the boiler. Now, each one of these boilers are unique. You have one that has pipes that line right... You have two of them that have pipes that line right up to the wall. Absolutely gorgeous. When you turn them on, they have this really nice glow to them, which is amazing. Then up here, you have the clock. The two clocks that he has, These are this is in one engram. It is this engram right here. The steampunk wall clock engram. Now, this clock, does this large clock, does not link to the world clock. However, this clock down here, the smaller one, make note of the time. So, Aaron, with the whole world clock thing, this is the second mod where you've put in the world clock function into a clock. Uh, is that going to be a standard feature with what you're doing and going forward with some of these mods? I know you. Uh, we've talked on the side about you're trying to do a decor mod for every uh, Bob's Tall Tales that comes out at about the same time. Um, my question is, are you going to be moving into the digital clock realm as well? <laughs> well, I can't take credit at all for the clock. I've got a, I've got a guy called Crazy Reese, one who does a lot of the, uh, the coding and uh, helps out significantly with that. So one thing he did say to me was that's exactly what I wanted to do. Initially, I wanted one uh, in here, a digital clock. Um, but that's a lot more work than the analog clock. So potentially I'm working on it. Hopefully we'll get that in. But uh, yeah, we're, we're trying to get as much kind of um, unique elements to the mods that we can. Now, obviously, I know when, well, we all know there's a clock now in, in Bob's Tall Tale. So I'm, uh, I'm happy for that because, you know, we can now look at their code and see how they did it as opposed to how we did it. <laughs> but um, yeah, that cheeky. is ex exactly. So that's that's the plan. Hopefully we can get a digital clock in there. And, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe it's going to mod where you can have a watch and rather than having to press pause or go to the clock, you can look at your wrist and it'll tell you what time it is on the game. Okay. Now, over here, we have three different types of pipes and three different types of vents for the pipes. Well, three different types. We have three different size of pipes and two different size vents and two different types of vents here, small, medium, and large. You have the horizontal pipes, small, medium, large. And then you have two types of vents. The vents can be put anywhere you want them to. So if I go in here and I grab the vents, I disable snapping. I can put a vent right here. or And that one has smoke. Or I can go to the, uh, the medium size, first medium size vent and I can put it here. And that one doesn't have smoke. So there's four different vents in this engram to give you smoke and two do not. So, and you can play, like I said, you can place them on the wall or you can place them on top of the pipes themselves to give it that look right here. I also have another example of it right here of the vertical and horizontal. Then you, we come to the 
smokestacks, the chimneys. Now, <clears throat> I think Aaron thought very long and hard about these and went into amazing detail. As you see, I have six on a roof and six on a flat surface. They're exactly the same. They're the three same models over and over again, but with a difference in each one. They're the th like I said, they're visually the same three, except for three do three sit flat and do not have the smoke coming out of them. The other three sit flat and have smoke coming out of them. And then you have the other six here in the same way, except for there's an additional change. They are meant to be on the roofs. They sit perfectly on the roofs without clipping through and without having the... Uh, without having that odd look of something square sitting on a, on a sloped roof. So I think that personally, I think that is an amazing detail and I can't wait to see what he does with this in a skin for that. When it comes to the smoke effects, uh, as you, as I stated in earlier, you have smoke coming out of the vents, you have smoke coming out of the chimneys, you have chimneys that are in a slanted angle, so it fits better on the roofs. Uh, why is having that animation and that smoke option important to you? And is that an extremely difficult part to put into the mods themselves? It, so, yeah, it, it, it's important to me, um, but it's not important to other people. So that's why you notice there's probably three or four different variants, some with smoke, some with others. For those who, because again, I don't know exactly how strenuous it is on the game itself but um i know some people complain where things move and all the particle effects are going off but it's, for me personally is again selfishly it comes down to when i build i like things to kind of look like they're in the world so you know putting pillars uh, on structural support um if there's a chimney having smoke come out of it if there's pipes with a vent going round, that moves as well so it's more so for me i like the things to look like they feel look like the feel and look like they should be in in the real world so it's massively important to me but it's not important to everyone hence why there's probably three or four different options on most of the things that do where it works and it doesn't well that makes sense that much that makes sense but uh, to the to the key point of the question there is is putting the smoke effects hard to do in the mod itself or is that something that already exists and you can just grab it from from another part of a code and throw it in there yeah, that, so, so that side of it, it's dead straightforward, uh, just depending on, you know, if you're using the assets within the game, it's a lot easier. You know, there's a lot, there's, um, a lot of different assets you can use, um, and it's a case of just deciding where that goes and when that's actually triggered. So as an example, if you use the pipe as an example, um, or the, the vent, sorry, on the pipe, if you select the pipe and it's in its green state, you know, before it's selected, you don't want the smoke to be placing and the sound to be placed and the noises to be going through. So there's a bit of coding you've got to do on that end so that it doesn't play or make the sound or you can't visually see the smoke until it's placed. But other than that, the asset itself, a lot of the assets are within the dev kit. It's just you've got to code them to do what you want it to do, trigger when you want it to trigger um, and that type of thing, you know. So it's more it's more playing with it to get it dialed in to where you want it and how you want the yeah the height the size you know the volume of it how you know, how dense it is you know and, and again back to the most important part the hardest part is when that's actually triggered and when it's played so you don't want the smoke to be coming out or sounds being played when you're in your inventory looking at the items you only want it to start that sound when it's placed or you want the smoke to start when it's placed that type of thing that's awesome uh so Aaron, I want to thank you for coming and taking some time away from your family and producing and creating us a, another mod that we hope to see soon. Uh, hint, hint. Any, any time, buddy. <laughs> uh, but just just uh, make make sure you just download it. <laughs> <laughs> you you know I'm going to. I'm one of your testers. I kind of have to. Yeah, exactly. Uh... <laughs> By default, though. <laughs> But uh, I really do appreciate you coming by and taking time out of your busy schedule to walk us through some of this. And uh, we look forward to seeing more mods like this. Um, what are the, just a little Easter egg, what are the next mods that you're planning on releasing? Um, there's a few. Um, I'm busy working on another free mod, uh, a deco mod, uh, 
obviously, because that's kind of what I'm doing at the moment. Uh, but it's going to be I call, I'm calling I'm, I'm toying with the idea of backyard decor, so things like you know tools and lawnmowers and uh, outdoor furniture and that type of thing, like gazebos and stuff. And uh, then the next one we'll probably be looking at is something in correlation with Bob's Tall Tales when that comes out with Extinction. Okay. Have you uh, have you thought about creating a map itself? Yes, but I'm not that good. I'm not that good yet. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the thing with a map is a mod you can probably you know you can knock out in a couple of months. I think a map you're looking at six months to a year to to get anything that's. That, that, that's playable, that, that's good, that's decent. Uh, but I'd love to do a map. Who knows? Um, see where this modern thing takes us. But uh, at the moment, it's structures and deco, I think, is uh, is my bag. Structures and deco. Got it. Uh, and one last question. Are you looking forward to November 8th? I am indeed. Well, I am and I'm not. <laughs> I'm apprehensive about it, to be fair. Uh, but yeah, of course, it's for a good cause, and it should, it should be fun. It should be a lot of fun. Really looking forward to what you and the guys have uh, have created, to be honest. Oh, I'm I'm ecstatic about it. Uh, so for those so for those of you who don't know what I'm referring to, on November eighth, Roz Clark and Aaron Longstaff are going to be hosting their annual charity stream for Extra Life which is a charity for the Children's Miracle Network. Uh, myself, Songbird Gaming, and several other uh, content creators have been asked to collab and create the events for this stream, which Aaron and uh, Roz have no idea what they've gotten themselves into. That's why he said he's a little apprehensive. He has seen some of my builds and how wonky I can make things, and he knows some of the other ones that are involved that are a little off kilter as well when it comes to their builds and having fun so i i can't wait to see the event and i can't wait for it to happen i think it's going to be great uh if you haven't already subscribed to their channels uh i highly recommend you do and we'll see you on the 8th for that stream 